well. Um, yeah. So as asked, we're, we're live on camera. Uh, I was asked a question about um, uh, these situations will keep these situations with uh, people or whatever will keep coming back until you pass the test, something like that. Yeah. Uh, until we've learned the lesson. Until we learn, yeah, I agree with that. I, I do agree with that, and I think, um, uh, uh, especially with family members, I think is quite often the case. That, I mean, a lot of a lot of times you can like you know cut people out of your life, but I I knew anyway. I speak for myself. I knew with my mother that I wanted to transcend my mother. You know, I wanted to transcend my mother, uh, meaning. Um, uh, actually ties in, uh, letting go of all outcomes and expectations and all meaning that I attached to my mother to totally transcend her. And that I knew was my opportunity uh, uh, to, to do that. And also I lived with my mother, so, um, so that was a great, you know, so you can, sort of, you can sort of work with it non-stop to get all those triggers out. So how you trans, and I believe, I really do, I mean, you can disagree, but I, I believe like, if you don't fully transcend something, it's going to come back in a different form somewhere. You know, it may not be in that particular type of relationship, but if you haven't transcended it, so, uh, and I think with with in my case, I'm pretty sure with my family that that's the thing that I should transcend. It's not the thing that I should disown my mother, and say I'll never speak to her again. And so that was the thing. So, so I do things like Muji, uh, the Observer. Uh, I do A Course in Miracles, Making Things Meaningless. Uh, I do The Twelve Steps, I'm um, into Dr. David R. Hawkins. So all the things is to transcend. <clears throat> so there's nothing outside, there's nothing outside in the world that, that has any effect on the infinite consciousness. So it's only the ego that can get hooked into anything. Because, um, <clears throat> so what is it, to transcend, uh, to transcend a person uh, so for me, with my mother, it was like facial expressions, uh, choice of words, uh, facial expressions, choice of words, vocal tone, tone of voice, um, you know, also all my ideas of what a mother should be and what the word mother meant to me, uh, they had a lot of charge, a lot of charge with my mother. But I knew that you can transcend words. I mean, what, what is words? Like noise. But not, you know, we say from A Course in Miracles, everything is equally meanless. So, you know, um, one type of noise is as meanless as another. Like if I he hear a car driving past, that's quite a meaningless noise. So if someone utters some vocal tones, I mean, that's meaningless. It has no meaning, unless the ego interprets the meaning. But you can strip the meaning. So the words... Now, if you're looking to get affirmation, or looking for criticism or approval, then that's looking for meaning from something. So you can let that go. Um, let go of voice tone. Voice tone is meaningless. Uh, let go of choice of words. I, I sometimes perceive that the choice of words was critical, but that's, but that's just something the ego does. There's no such thing as critical. There's no such thing as a tone of voice or expressions or uh, needing anything. You know, like if a random person walks past and past me in the street and doesn't like me, it's meaningless, you know, or if someone just utters some vocal words. So you can do it. So I also practice two things. One is uh, full transcendence means that, okay, so this is the way I sort of see it. If you want to fully transcend someone, there's nothing they can do or say, uh, there's nothing they can do that will shake, shake you, or shake you being in the observer, or shake, or have any kind of infer. And that's what I mean by transcendence. So I think that's a great I'm not saying that this is just my experience. You know, I wanted to be able to transcend my mother. There's nothing she can do or say or, or whatever. And I also wanted to, I practiced a few different things. One was practicing unconditional love. So it'd be like, uh, my way of off offering her unconditional love was to make her offer to make her a cup of tea. Because she actually liked tea. You know, so that was my act of love. And uh, in the early days, okay, so the early days, I had a lot of repressed feelings around my mother. So I'd often, you know, I might see her and feel quite, you know, angry or feel quite emotional. So you, you just sit with those feelings because it's like an individual is just triggering your repressed feelings that you have with, with that type of individual. So, okay, this is the, like a kind of a authority figure, mother figure, 
So every time it doesn't behave, my mother doesn't behave the way I expect her to behave, these feelings would arise. You should use these choice of words. So I'd go and sit with those feelings. And I, I knew from Dr. Hawkins that we have a finite amount. This is the great news, that there's a finite amount of feelings. It's not like... You know, like most addicts, when they sit with a, you know, like I'm feeling angry, think, well, there's no point in feeling it because I'll just keep feeling angry forever, for all eternity. But if you sit with it, what really helped me was like, you can sit through all the feelings you have with the person and then eventually they'll have no effect on you. There'll be no more feelings to come out. Isn't that amazing? So I thought, okay, so I've got like a hundred units of angriness, so I've got a hundred units of shame, I've got a hundred units of uh, fear. So I just, every time something comes up, I can sit with that feeling and I'm thinking, oh yeah, I've just taken out three units today. So that, that means I've only got like 97 units to go. So that was exciting to feel out. And over time, you get less and less feelings coming up because you're sitting with these feelings and, not, and you're also letting go. Also that my mother would have no meaning. My mother, I mean, this might sound funny, but you know, like if, a, if I see a stranger on the street, that should be like what I'm doing when I'm looking at my mother. There should be no sort of charge. I didn't want to have any specific charge with her. Like she's important or she has a positive or negative connotation. So my mother is just as meaningless as of course. My mother is as meaningless as the table, as meaningless as the light bulb, as meaningless as the plant. So you look at each thing, like I can sit in the room and there's my mother watching TV and I look at my mother for one second. My mother is as meaningless. Then I look at the chair. My mother is as meaningless as the chair. Then I look at the TV as meaningless as the TV. So everything is equally meaningless. You know, you're doing that. Also practicing being in the observer. So, you know, before you go and see your mother, just go into uh, the observer. What is the observer? Being the, obs the witnesser or the observer of thoughts and body. If you're with the mother, what I would do, because my mother used to be very, very charged, is before I go in, before you go in and see her, because you know she's watching TV, make sure you're strongly in the observer before. So, or you could be watch some Muji, Okay, I'm in the observer. Be strong, and it's kind of like a, an, it's like a, an intention to hold the observer as long as possible. Of course, your mother will start speaking and making vocal tones and, and all kinds of things. And uh, what would happen then is she'd say, you know, you'd stay in the observer, and there's something she would say, and you'd be out of the observer. You'd, ident you'd identify with a vocal tone, or identify with a thought, or a thing she said. So then you have to like go out and process and go back into those, feel the feelings out. But the next time, you know, you, you, you try and help, you know, with practice, you, things that used to pull you out of the being in the observer or, or have a reaction, they no longer have an effect, you know. So you're, bit by bit, less things you could say or do or be, and less feelings were coming up over time. And then, um, because it was a very difficult relationship. And I thought, and I've always shared this in the room, that was the miraculous. I thought because I'd had such a bad, had such a bad relationship, what would happen is like, I could be like Buddha, but she'd carry on being, saying the things that I didn't like and making the vo vo voice tones. And what happened actually was miraculous, is that she became everything that I probably would have hoped her to become. And we had a, a really loving relationship for many years. And it was like, as, a, as I let go of her needing to be a certain way, or have, give me, as a limited person, anything that I thought I needed, then she suddenly changed as well and became loving. That was a bonus. That wasn't what I was looking for. I wasn't doing the thing. I was doing it so she could have no effect. So, now, the, the, question, the question I was asked, like, is it worth, I mean, I, I think, of course, in life, there's sometimes, you know, you have to say no to certain things, but generally, um, I think the universe will always keep testing you in a different, in a diff from a different person if you haven't transcended it. Not necessarily that you have to be with a person who's really toxic. But, um, but um, why? Let me answer why. Because um, experience occurs, experience... Uh, mm, limited experience, or ego experiencing occurs if there's ego identification. I don't know if this makes sense. So my ego identification with uh, my ego identification with thoughts, ideas, images, people, my ego identifications, while I still have ego identification, while I have limiting beliefs 
or while I have limiting outcomes, expectations, or desires, then that will attract from the universe that thing over and over again at different levels of consciousness until I clear it. You know, you only experience what, you, you know, your ego, uh, as, you go in, as you do more and more enlightenment work, things that you used to be able to track and remember become less and less because you, you haven't, your ego is no longer making them special. So you, you, you stay in the present moment or you stay in the, in the observer more and more and you don't. But things, um, so here, here's an example of tra transcending. It's like, um, so your ego, your ego's experience of the past or its projection of the future are, are, can only be of things which it's holding in mind, of the I identified thoughts and limiting ideas. So once you transcend it, these things no longer stay. So it's like, you know, like if I'm going to transcend donuts, let's say I'm a donut addict, like, if someone brings a donut in here, then uh, it's something that I have in my ego. That donut is a special thing, you know. So every time there's a donut here, I'll have experience of donut, you know. And if someone then says to me like, oh, "What was that group like you went to on Saturday?" I'll say, "Oh yeah, I just remember there was just this big donut on the table. That's all that happened. You see, because that's all I, that's all that's in my experience. So, and even if I go to another." If this guy invites me to his house and there's a donut there, then I'll just remember the donut because it's part of. So until I transcend donuts, you know, my experience will be full of donuts. Yeah, and then if I if I transcend donuts, then actually at a certain point, people will be bringing donuts in here, and after the meeting, I won't remember there was any donuts. So. So it's like, and that's for me, is like transcending the world, you see. Once you transcend, it's like you're empty. You're just in the present moment. You're just in the observer. So you don't, things no longer become special. Uh, and actually you find that things are much more beautiful, much more loving, much more spontaneous, much more wonderful than when your ego is holding on to things. Because there's some, uh, it's tracking information. It's tracking information in certain scenarios. So that's why... Um, in uh, some places some people have such strong reactions to vo voice tones or whatever and others are like uh, it, it just filters through them and they're, it, it's, not, it's not held in consciousness so but you know having said that it's not necessary to 100% transcend things I mean, if you like mo transcend most of it it's not going to really have a negative effect it's just going to be very light and, and fun but if you have something <coughs> which is trapped very heavily then um, uh, with a strong positive, with a strong attraction or aversion, that's going to create huge ups and downs. Like, oh, I'm, I'm disappointed there's no cake today, or, or, um, or, or it's terrible because, um, why could it be terrible? No one's called me today. Nobody's called me today. I have no likes on Facebook. Or my favorite guy hasn't come to the group yeah. today. <laughs> that's why it's terrible, or whatever. Whatever it is, so that, yeah. There's the strong dualities, otherwise it doesn't matter. Like, if my favorite person hasn't come, or if the donuts are here or not here, it's, it's an irrelevance. So you, when you transcend it, when you transcend a person, you're also transcending, because really a person is not really a person on some level. If you go into states of oneness, a person is just representing your internal baggage mm -hmm. of what you're seeing. So, you know, like, uh, I don't like, you know, I don't know, what is it? I, um, I don't like people of this nationality, you know, when they come. Actually, when you transcend that, then they, that doesn't exist for you any longer. Otherwise, you're going to see that nationality everywhere you go. Uh, and then you see some, you see, when you're not filtering through your ego, you're in the states of the observer of the oneness. So there is no, there is no like s separated filtering yeah. going on of good and bad. It's more consciousness playing out yeah. instead of people versus anything. That's right. So then, then th that's a transcendent and, place. And yeah. it takes a, a lot of the, the it, it's really, that has really been helping me in terms of taking the personal side out of what people, basically things, and the ma ma mainly people would do to me. Yeah. You know, it's not personal. I, 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 eventually it's coming from unconscious behavior that I'm, I, I can also do, uh, anger or whatever, but it's not, it's not who they are. Yeah. Because at the end we're all self, with capital right. S, unlimited love. 
and uh, and it's consciousness trying to tell me something, uh, you know, uh, trying to you know mirroring back at me something that I'm yet to accept and love and all that. Beautifully said. Yeah, and this mm -hmm. the consciousness will tell you the bits mm -hmm. you've not released yet that mm -hmm. you need to still transcend. Mm -hmm. And I I quickly want to stop there and mm -hmm. talk about giving talks and spiritual talks, if mm -hmm. I may.